Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at evaluating finite sums in a summation notation. We're going to use some algebraic rules for finite sums, sum rule, difference rule, constant multiple rule, and constant value rule. And we're also going to use a couple of formulas for the sum of k, the sum of k squared, and the sum of k cubed. So let's start with part a. We have the sum k equals 1 to 6 of 2. Well, with Without actually referencing a rule, if you keep in mind what this actually means, it's telling us to add up twos. The first two would be when k is equal to one, and the second term of two would be when k is equal to two, and so on. And we're gonna do this six times. So instead of working all of that out, it makes sense that we would just multiply the number of twos, which is six, times the value that we're adding up. So we're gonna have six twos, so six times two is 12. Of course, if that had been a value like the sum k equals one to a thousand, it's much easier to write a thousand times two than it is to write out a thousand twos. So that's where the constant value rule comes in. In this case, case our c is the 2 and the n is the 6 and since it's fitting this constant value rule pattern we can just multiply n times c. Now let's look at part b. We have the sum k equals 1 to 5 of 2 plus k. Well when you have a sum within your summation we can break it apart according to the sum rule which makes sense because essentially just rearranging terms of a sum. So I'm gonna add up all the twos first, and then I'm gonna add up all the k's, and then we'll add them together. So we have the sum k equals one to five of two, and the sum k equals one to five of k. Well, as we just saw, when you're adding up a constant, you can just multiply n times c. So we're going to have five times two for that summation. Plus, now we need to look for the sum k equals one to five of k. And of course you can, since the index only goes up to an upper limit of five, you could just add them up. But we want to apply these rules so if we have large sums, we don't need to write out all of the terms. So we're we're going to look at um, this rule over here. The sum k equals 1 to n of k is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So in this case, our n is 5. So we're going to have 5 times 5 plus 1 and divide that by 2. So this is going to give us 10 for the first summation plus, let's see, this is a 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 times 5 is 15. So 10 plus 15 is 25. Now let's look at part C. We have the sum k equals one to six of four k. So for this one, we don't have a constant. We have a constant multiple, a coefficient on the k. And so we're going to use the idea that what's happening here is we're going to have a whole sequence of terms, each one of them having a factor of four. And so of course we can factor that four out. So in general, we have that the constant multiple rule tells us we can factor out a coefficient. Can't factor out anything with a k in it because that varies over the sum, but that four does not vary, so we can factor it out front. So we have four times the sum k equals one to six of k. Leaving the four alone, it's gonna tag along and multiply. We can uh, use the formula sum k equals one to n of k is n times n plus one over two, where n in this case is six. So we're going to have six times six plus one divided by two. So that's going to be four times, and then let's see, that's three times seven is 21. So that's going to be 84. So now let's look at D. K equals zero to seven of K minus three. So be careful here. In all of our rules, as we have them written, we are starting the index at the lower limit of one, and here we have a lower limit of zero. So before we even start 
to try to evaluate this, we're going to rewrite it as an equivalent summation that starts at 1. So how would I have to change the argument of the sum? If I started at 1 and went to 8 instead of going from 0 to 7, I would still notice I'd still have the same number of terms. I've increased k by 1 in each case. If we're increasing the index, we're going to have to decrease the argument to compensate. We increased the index by 1, so we're going to have to decrease the argument by 1. So we're going to have k minus 1 minus 3. That way we get the same terms. And if you're ever not sure that you did it right, you can always check the first few terms, plugging in the values of k and see if you get the same first few terms. Okay, so in that case we have the sum k equals 1 to 8 of k minus minus 4. We have a difference, so we're going to break it apart using the difference rule. So we have the sum k equals 1 to 8 of k minus the sum k equals 1 to 8 of 4. All right, now we're going to use the rule that k equals 1 to n of k is n times n plus 1 over 2. In this case, our n is actually 8. So we will have 8 times 8 plus 1 over 2. And then on the right, that summation, k equals 1 to 8 of 4, is the sum of a constant. So we're just going to have 8 times 4. So that's going to be, let's see, 4 times 9 is 36 minus 32, which equals 4. And finally, we have part E, the sum k equals 1 to 6 six of k squared plus 4k plus 2. So here we have uh, three terms, but that's okay. We can still use the sum rule. No matter how many terms there are, we can break it apart into that many sums. All right, now this first sum has a k squared in it. You can't just take the sum of the k and square it. You have to actually apply a different rule. So the first n squares are going to add up to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. n in this case is 6. So we're going to have 6 times 6 plus 1 oh, oh, times 2 times 6 plus 1, so 12 plus 1 over 6. And then plus, in the second term, we're going to think of it as 4 times the sum of the k's. So we're going to have 4 times, and we're going to use the other formula, n times n plus 1 over 2. So 6 times 6 plus 1 over 2. Plus, we have a sum from 1 to 6 of the constant 2, um, which is going to be 6 times 2. So the first term turns out to be the 6's cancel, and we have 7 times 13 which is going to be 91 plus we have 4 times 3 times 7 so 4 times 21 is 84 which we actually got in part C before and plus 12 which we got in part A and so we're going to have 91 plus 84 is 175 plus 12 is going to be 187. I hope you found this video helpful if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up that helps other students to find the video.